And welcome back. It's 556. The new year brings in a new effort to help the San Antonio Food Bank. Workforce Solutions Alamo accepting donations at all 16 of its career centers through the end of this month. If you want to help, you can check out all the details right now on KSAT.com. Coming up ahead in our next hour of GMSA, we are continuing to following DeMar Hamlin, the Buffalo Bill, who collapsed on the field during Monday Night Football. We'll have the optimistic news on his condition this morning. And parents will want to watch this one coming up at six. We're asking what's the more difficult task, raising boys or raising girls? We'll tell you what the experts are saying. And also just ahead, we're staying on top of an overnight shooting at a West Side hotel. What San Antonio police say they shot a man coming up. And trans guide right there. Things looking pretty good this morning. Stephen Cavazos is here with an update on what the roads look like as your six o'clock hour approaches. And Mike goes to Hage with your weekend forecast coming up. Questions this morning after San Antonio police said they shot a man at a West Side hotel. We'll tell you how it all began. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Kevin McCarthy lost a sixth round of votes in his bid to become Speaker of the House, but some new concessions to those holdout Republicans could get him over the finish line. The latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, there's that beautiful bright moon. And if you step outside, you're going to notice a little colder, more cold than it was yesterday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Thursday, January 5th. Going to be an absolutely gorgeous day I again know. today. That's the nice afternoons stuff. are so yeah. nice. I feel really lucky, lucky like we won the what, the weather lottery. The weather lottery. Yeah. Like Just that. about. Yeah. Yeah, when you have this perfect weather and, and blue skies out there, clear skies right now, as you saw with that moon and cold temperatures this morning, but then you get those 30, 35 degree warm ups throughout the day. And that's what's going to be again today. So jacket this morning, make sure kids names in it because this afternoon, hopefully it's uh, small enough to stuff in a backpack. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, that's such a pretty picture out there with that moon and those clear skies. Technically it is full tomorrow, but boy, it's uh, every bit and looks like every bit full right now. 44 here in town, 37 Balverde, 35 in comfort. They've actually gone up a couple of degrees there in comfort and uh, we're almost down to our normal low temperature, which is 41. This is historically the, the coolest time of the year. 42 right now in New Braunfels. There is a hint of a wind chill in places. Feels like 38 New Braunfels, 40 out there at the airport. Not bad, but just you, know, you might want to Make sure the zipper is all the way up and your collar is turned up this morning. And as far as the allergens, yesterday Mountain Cedar had gone up even from the previous day's reading. This is almost where we were on uh, January 1st when we were uh, 12 550, I believe it was. So it's going to be interesting to see what this count is when it comes out later on this morning, given the fact we had those very breezy northwesterly winds throughout the day yesterday. So it's probably really shaking up those mountain cedar trees. We'll drop down another couple of notches when it's before it's all said and done and then warm up very quickly throughout the morning. You can probably watch the thermometer go up this morning. We'll make it up to 70 today at noon. Top off with a high temperature up to 75. The wind is going to start to shift around out of the southeast. Not really surging back with humidity, but we'll have enough humidity overnight and tomorrow morning to see a couple of patches of fog and then more sunshine throughout the day. Different story, though, over the weekend. We'll get those details all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, still nothing to talk about? Yeah, not a whole lot over here, Mike. Uh, and that's great because anyone that has to wake up this morning and get out on the roadways, they can enjoy some quiet streets. Just check out some of these shots from Trans Guide. Uh, traffic's obviously picking up a little bit. We're at that busy hour where things really tar start to take a turn, but make sure that you drive safe out there and you can enjoy some of the shots there at 1604 at Pat Booker. 410 at East Houston does look like it is getting just a tad bit busier, but we can expect to see more folks, as I mentioned earlier, a little bit later as the morning commute does get rolling here. Uh, right behind me, just a lot of green on the screen, and as I mentioned, that has been the story for the last few days or so, but it is back to normal, so we will start to see a lot more red building up as the minutes do go by, so just if you can, take advantage of the quiet roadways. Even the drive to San Antonio right now is not looking too bad, actually pretty pleasant from Pleasanton on I-37 northbound. 28 minutes right now to the Alamo City, about 30 minutes on US-9 
90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville. And that arrival from Lytle should be within about 17 minutes on I-35 northbound. Back here on Transguide, things are moving along just fine. We're hoping it'll keep up uh, like this for a little while longer. But with more folks waking up and heading back to work and back to school, things are expected to change. So just make sure you drive safe. And it did look like this shot right behind me. Our friends at Transguide are moving it. So we'll find out what's going on over there and give you those updates in the next few minutes. David, Steph. Thank you, Stephen. We begin with a developing story. A man is shot multiple times by two San Antonio police officers after pointing a gun in their direction at a hotel. That is according to SAPD Chief William McManus. It happened just before nine last night on Calabra Road near Northwest 18th Street. That's where McManus says police were notified about a man with a gun in the parking lot threatening people. Eventually, officers found out that the 44-year-old man with that gun had already gone up to his room. When they went to check on him, the man pointed the gun at the officers, and that's when police shot him. McManus says the man was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Right now, it's not clear if the man fired at the officers. Both of the officers involved in the shooting have been placed on administrative duty pending further investigation, which is department policy. McManus also told us that he hadn't yet reviewed body cam footage of the shooting, so some of the information could change during the investigation. A warning from Shirts Police about phone scammers targeting victims by claiming their family members are being held captive and demanding money for the release. Officials say they have received multiple reports of these virtual kidnapping ransom calls, and in some cases, the victim may hear actors screaming in the background of that call, making it seem like an actual kidnapping. Now, experts say there are some key indicators that would point towards the phone call being a scam. We have that list posted for you over on our website at ksat.com. The verdict is in for former Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela, and that reading was met with some backlash in the courtroom. Dylan Collier has more. It was only fitting that the snarkiness that defined much of Michelle Barrientes Vela's trial was on full display during the final moments of her sentencing. Again, that's a compound question. You're asking two different things. On the, on the first, I, I'm not objecting. Precinct 2 Judge Roberto Vasquez, who shared a building with the ex-constable, was the final witness. He described Barrientes Vela as all over the place, engaging in conversations that were nonsensical. It would continue a pattern, even from her own defense, of characterizing the former public official as being in over her head, not fit for the job of leading a law enforcement agency. The pitchforks are out because they feel like she needed to be knocked down a peg. And she has been. She has been humbled. She has been humiliated. She has now been convicted. The prosecution concluded its closing remarks by asking for a six-year prison sentence. I have the words public corruption and Michelle Bella up there. This was a public corruption trial. We presented evidence of public corruption. We presented evidence of public corruption within the punishment phase. Those words are now synonymous. After examining the evidence one final time during lunch, Judge Velia Mesa handed down a sentence of five years probation, 90 days in jail, and 600 hours of community service. Barrientes Vela, who now works at her husband's used car dealership, can never work as a peace officer in the state of Texas again. We're satisfied and happy in the sense that with the verdict as it was, the only thing that um, the, the best outcome for us would be probation. Now, Vela's attorneys have called this a tainted verdict and believe she has a pretty good shot of getting the convictions overturned on appeal. She can remain free and does not have to serve that sentence while an appeal is ongoing. Developments overnight on Capitol Hill. You're taking a live look there right now. Kevin McCarthy reportedly offering new concessions after losing a sixth vote for House Speaker. Yeah, because of the gridlock, no members of the House have even been sworn in yet. As ABC's M1 explains, that means there are zero members of the House of Representatives right now. Good morning. There's a potential new offer on the table this morning that could get Kevin McCarthy over the line and into the speaker's office. Well, we can talk until we get this done.
Overnight, sources say Kevin McCarthy offered key new concessions, hoping to sway far-right Republican holdouts to cast their vote for him as speaker, a vote he's now lost six consecutive times. Sources say the concessions include a rule change that would allow one member of the House to call for a vote to oust the future speaker, down from the original five members required by a previous deal. Another concession on the table, putting more members of the House Freedom Caucus on the powerful House Rules Committee. And a promise to a vote on bills that conservatives have been pushing on border security and term limits for House members. However, even with those concessions, sources say McCarthy is still unlikely to have the votes needed to secure the Speaker's gavel. Some Republicans now say this isn't so much about McCarthy as it is about not bending to the will of a small minority. This is about making sure that we do not reward dysfunction. President Biden knocked Republicans, calling it embarrassing that the vote was taking so long. I hope they get their act together. The House is scheduled to return today at noon, and until a speaker is chosen, the House cannot pass bills or even swear in its new members. Former Speaker Nancy Pelosi said last night that the Republican gridlock shows disrespect for the institution. M1, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer news, a lot of companies across the country are looking for help. The Labor Department says there were 10.5 million jobs available in November, hovering near historic highs. The same report also showed layoffs staying low. But a couple of big tech companies are sending out pink slips. Amazon now says it will cut about 18,000 positions. And software giant Salesforce says it will lay off about 8,000 employees. Spotify helping users create their own digital time capsules. The new playlist in a bottle feature asks you to name songs that you're into right now. Then it locks them away until next January when you can play them again. And remember what will seem like the good old days. <laughs> the technology behind self-driving cars now being used to power baby strollers. The Ella Smart Stroller costs 3300 bucks. It uses artificial intelligence to drive itself and break on its own, but it's meant to provide another set of eyes or hands, not to replace a parent or caregiver. So who controls? Does the baby control it? Like, hey, I'm going to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't let the baby take charge. <laughs> no. The baby needs to stop. Hey, baby, stop. No, I don't, I don't know about that stroller. Uh, we'll Me see. neither. Yeah. 6, 10, and 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, police over in Universal City have some new tools to help them fight crime. We're going to give you a bird's eye view right after the break. And outside with the city cam, oh, the moon is still shining bright as it says. Man, that's just a gorgeous shot. Isn't it? Love South Texas this time of year. And love the fact that it's cold this morning and then it'll be warm this afternoon. Yeah, we'll take it. Welcome back. It is 614, 14 after 6 o'clock. Universal City Police are excited about the launch of their drone exploratory program. Officer Nicholas Guerrero is the first drone pilot for the agency, and he's undergone some difficult training to ensure the high-tech and expensive crime-fighting tool is used properly. So far, the drone has been used to assist a nearby in searches and even to collect evidence for other agencies. We have a creek bottom along our parks uh, that uh, that runs parallel with uh, Schertz and, and Selma area. So I've been able to assist from our side, fly all the way down to the creek bottom up to 35 and all the way back and back into our jurisdiction. So now that he is trained, the goal is to train other officers to pilot the drones. By the way, the city of San Antonio Police Department has had a drone program for several years now. Time now, 6.15, and I-35 at Olympia looks a little crowded. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. <laughs> oh. Yeah, thankfully, it's just normal traffic, believe it or not. Uh, we mentioned this earlier that uh, I-35, one of those busy corridors, and this is a perfect example of what you'll see now that morning rush, uh, we're getting closer to it. Both the north and southbound lanes just crowded with folks out there. Uh, not picked up any issues in either direction at this point, but as I mentioned, 35, one of the busiest corridors really in the country. We know hundred thousands of people 
travel through there for work every day. So just give yourself some time. Going to be a busy commute there along 35, but we're not picking up any red in that area of town just yet. The northeast side looks pretty green so far, uh, but we'll probably see some of that in the next few minutes or so. Quiet roads back here in town. The metropolitan area has stayed quiet for now, so we can enjoy the roadways, but keep a lookout because we do have bridge and signal work that is taking place overnight here off Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. It is overnight, as I mentioned, but the work will continue at least up until Monday, January 16th, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Now, crews sometimes uh, stay there a little bit longer to pick up some of the equipment, but be on the lookout because you will see a full closure of the main lanes in both directions from Bandera Road to State Highway 151. But scan that QR code that is now on your screen. It gets you to our case at traffic page and it has a full list of the current closures right now throughout the month of January. But 2023 looks to be like a busy year for our tech stock crew. So just make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time. And this is a time of year that we make sure our kids that they have their names on their jackets. Uh. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Because sure. you need it in the morning, you won't need it in the afternoon, and get stuffed in a backpack or dragged behind or something like that. Yes. So, uh, school bus, yeah, maybe want to warm mm. that up just a little bit. We are going to be dropping down to 42 degrees. Got some 30s in parts of the hill country. Going to be a beautiful, beautiful sunrise this morning, and just nothing but sunshine and blue skies all day long. A fantastic day up to 75. So, across the board, we're gaining about 30 to 35 wow. degrees wow. on average. I think if you hurry outside, you might still be able to catch this picture the moon, wow. which is one day away from being full. That's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous shot right there. Oh my gosh. Talk about a long lens on that camera. That's fantastic looking. Up, and there it is, right on cue. We still got the moon. And it has not quite set yet. And uh, on the opposite side, obviously, like I said, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise. And then just the opposite later on today. As the sun is going down this afternoon, the moon's going to be coming up. And it is going to be spectacular as well. 36 Ball Verde, 35 Comfort. Helotus at 4844 out there at the airport and uh, maybe a puff of a breeze. So in some places you can shave off a degree or two. Like I said, we'll drop down to 42 degrees when it's all said and done. And then temperatures are going to be jumping up six, seven degrees per hour throughout the morning. You can probably watch the thermometer go up. We'll be up to 70 at noon and then up to 75 later on this afternoon. Wind's going to shift around to the south to southeast. And it's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to be overly windy today. But as far as the humidity is concerned, dew points are bone dry. And that's why we are seeing temperatures drop down and then warm up so much because the dry air doesn't hold the heat in, heats up very easily. And that'll be the case throughout the day with the dry air. But notice how dew points start to come up a little bit more. And as these numbers come up and as the temperatures drop down overnight with the clear skies, they meet up. We're going to be seeing some fog, some patchy fog around the area tomorrow. And then notice how the humidity and the dew points continue to come up with southeasterly winds throughout the day tomorrow and then going into Saturday morning. And that's when we're really going to start to see a lot in the way of some clouds around here, as well as some mist drizzle, some fog on Saturday morning. And we'll still keep a, then a couple of showers around throughout the day. Day, just as kind of the scattered variety around here and then that front moves on through and there's a little bit different opinion in a couple of different computer models. One of them has things clearing out rather nicely on Sunday. This one in particular has a few of these lingering showers still hanging in here. Now granted this is a kind of painted in with a broad brush doesn't mean it's going to be raining everywhere this green is, but just that chance for some rain. So maybe a couple of lingering showers in the afternoon hours on Sunday. Forecast today, fantastic, great sunrise, 70 at noon, and blue skies, that intense blue, because the air is really dry upstairs in the atmosphere. So again, it's just going to be that spectacular shade of blue. 75 for high temperature today, 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Tomorrow, a little bit of fog in the morning, then up to 77, the warm afternoon. Humidity will continue to build in here, especially tomorrow night into Saturday, and some clouds, some Fog in the morning, mist, drizzle, a couple of showers here and there. The front moves through. Notice how it's not a big drop in temperatures, more of these Pacific fronts. It will get rid of some of the humidity, though, so it'll be more comfortable, but we'll still have a couple of uh, showers left over, uh, at least throughout the first half of the day on Sunday. And we need the rain, so yeah, a little bit here or there. I don't know if it's going to be a huge rain event, unfortunately. Well, from my Weather 101 class, it's, <laughs> we're in a La Nina, and so it was supposed to be a milder, drier winter. 
I learned that in Weather 101. So and this is, it has lived up to that. I mean, except for right before Christmas, which was somewhat of an anomaly, obviously. Yeah, but, so, but yeah, and then unfortunately, it's staying. You know, after a very dry, second driest year on record last year, and we're kind of continuing that trend. One one hundredth of an inch of rain so far this year. Oh wow! That's why you should join Weather 101. <laughs> Learn he pays that. attention. Yeah. Good job, David. <laughs> Six twenty-one. It's right around 45, 46 degrees right now. Does Spidey quiz you when you go out and do the uh, uh, Wednesdays? Yeah. That's, 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 that's why you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> and are you ready for the college football championship? Well, after the break, we're going to show you how the TCU Horned Frogs get fired up for a big game. The ABCs of CKD. A is for awareness, because knowing that your chronic kidney disease and type 2 diabetes could progress to dialysis is important. B is for belief that there may be more you can do. Just remember that K is for kidneys and Carendia. For adults living with CKD and type 2 diabetes, Carendia is proven to reduce the risk of kidney failure, which can lead to dialysis. Carendia is a once-daily tablet that treats CKD differently than type 2 diabetes medications to help slow the progression of kidney damage and reduce the risk of cardiovascular events, such as heart attacks. Do not take Carendia if you have problems with your adrenal glands or take certain medications called CYP3A4 inhibitors. Carendia can cause hyperkalemia which is high potassium levels in your blood. Ask your doctor before taking products containing potassium. Corendia can also cause low blood pressure and low sodium levels. So now that you know your ABCs, remember K is for kidneys. And if you need help slowing kidney damage, ask your doctor about Corendia. The Silver and Black continue their New York road trip last night, coming off a huge loss to the Brooklyn Nets. The Spurs look to rebound against the Knicks, Madison Square Garden so they could get back into the win column. The Spurs started off slow, getting behind 10-2 to 2 in the opening minutes. And the Spurs were able to fight back with Keldon Johnson trying to keep his team in the game, but in the end, they just could not stop the Knicks guard, Jalen Brunson. He finished with 38. Spurs end up losing a close one. The final for Madison Square Garden, 117-114 Knicks. So now the Spurs will try to snap that three-game losing streak at home against the Detroit Pistons. That tip-off is set for tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Give them hell, TCU. Rip, rip, Those are the Horned Frogs at Texas Christian University right now. They're getting ready and getting fired up for their matchup with the Georgia Bulldogs in the national championship game. And when they take the field against the Bulldogs, the national audience will be introduced to one of the most unique cheers in college football. In fact, to many, it may even sound more like a Dr. Seuss poem. Riff Ram is one of the oldest battle cries in college football, dating all the way back to the 1920s. The words don't actually mean anything, but the spirit behind them always been there with the fans and the players embracing it over the years. It will help the chance pull off a victory we'll see on monday night hey you, you do anything you can do to make sure your team's fired up and getting ready for this thing championship game monday 6 30 tcu in georgia you know there's a lot of tcu fed yes a bunch of us jumped on that bandwagon yeah you got to, you got to root for your team from texas right yes I, and so, i wore purple and there you go you yeah. wore your purple i know there's a lot of folks from san antonio who actually have kids mm -hmm. that go that to school. tcu yeah so they are all fired up. Yeah, happy for them. It's yeah. exciting time. Great stuff. We'll be watching that. Yes, we will. Time now, 626 and 46 degrees for now. Ahead in our next half hour, we're going to bring you the new details we've learned about a woman who was arrested accused of stealing lotto tickets. Police officers shoot and wound a man at this West Side Motel. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why the police chief says this investigation isn't over yet. He says, I'm sorry I let you down. I'm sorry I let you die. Survivor's guilt is a feeling many are experiencing right now in Uvalde. Ahead this half hour, what counselors are saying is the best remedy. Looking live now at St. Peter's Square, where tens of thousands gathered to say goodbye to Pope Emeritus Benedict. We're going to have more on his life and legacy. And outside with life, yeah, oh, look, you can barely see the moon right there. It's about to drop down below the horizon. That means the sun's going to rise, and it's going to be a gorgeous sunset. It's going to be a beautiful day. A little chilly this morning, but things are going to change.
Good morning. It is Thursday, January 5th, almost Friday, a short week for some people out there. What did you call it earlier? What's the, the, you, the, some, the technical <laughs> term? What, what was that? The penultimate. The penultimate. Ah. So the ultimate day, the ultimate, ah, the last day would, okay. of the work week would be tomorrow. Penultimate one day before that. The day before that would be the ante, A-N-T-E, antepenultimate. It's Friday Eve. Yeah. <laughs> or Thursday. Or Thursday. I'm going back over here while I got that out. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about the moon again. <laughs> yeah, it is gorgeous out there. Of course, the moon's going to be technically full tomorrow, but boy, oh boy, what a beautiful, beautiful moon set and sunrise in roughly an hour. And then Flip it over later on tonight. Sun's going down tonight. Moon's going to be coming up uh, in the east. 44 degrees right now out there at the airport. Almost down to our normal low temperature, which is 41 this time of year. Two points at 29, so very dry air. A little bit of a breeze, not much, but just enough to add kind of a nip to some of these temperatures. 34 in Comfort, 36 Balverde, 48 Helotus, and boy, the Mountain Cedar. I'm a little bit afraid to see what the Mountain Cedar count's going to be when the update comes out later on this morning because this reading, which was up from the previous day's reading was before we had those northwesterly winds all day yesterday. So, uh, yeah, Mountain Sea is we'll get the update in about a half an hour to an hour. Uh, hang on to your hats or hang on to your Kleenex, whatever the case may be. Clear cold this morning and then later on this afternoon, sunny, warm. We're going to be gaining 30, in some cases close to 35 degrees throughout the course of the day. Thanks to all this dry air in place. Then a little more humidity overnight tonight. So we'll see some patchy fog tomorrow, then more sunshine in the afternoon. And yeah, it's still going to be warm. We'll still be in the uh, mid to upper 70s. Then a lot more humidity comes in here overnight tomorrow night into Saturday. So we'll have fog again, some mist, some drizzle, a couple of showers, and that front's going to move on through late on Saturday. We'll still have a couple of lingering showers even into Sunday, and how long they linger, that's still a little bit iffy as of right now. We'll definitely have a few of them around Sunday morning, and uh, uh, some folks will be seeing some sunshine, especially off to the west later in the day on Sunday. What about temperatures in behind that front? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority been kind of quiet in your corner yeah. of the uh, studio this it morning. It has been very quiet, Mike, but uh, some of these trans guide cameras look like things uh, are picking up a little bit for folks out there. Uh, take a look at 604 Medeo Creek. You can see that traffic in both those east and westbound lanes is looking pretty busy, especially there at 1604 at Marbach. We can expect that around this half hour because it is morning rush, so a lot more folks are getting the morning started with us. Now, this is what we told you you could expect around this time. A little bit more yellow building out there on US 90 in those eastbound lanes as you approach 1604. Uh, you can pick it up right there on the far west side of San Antonio. Uh, also, you can see it a little bit building on uh, the northwest side and even on the northeast side on 35 if you're approaching Live Oak uh, near 1604. Now, while this uh, map has not picked up any big issues just yet, I just located something on the San Antonio fire page we want you to be aware of. A crash may have been reported here along I-10 as you approach FM 1516. Now, the problem with this area is some of the trans guide cameras aren't necessarily working in that particular spot of town, so we wouldn't be able to bring you the Conditions, but we will keep a close eye on that. Find out if there are any updates as the commute does get rolling. But right now, as we get you back here on the trans guide rotation, 10 at Brazos doesn't look too bad, but it is getting busier out there. We'll keep you updated throughout the morning. David Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Two San Antonio police officers say they shot a man who first pointed a gun at them. It happened after they answered a call for a disturbance at a West Side motel. Katrina Weber is live in the 1400 block of Culebra Road and Katrina, we understand that the police chief says this is not an open and shut case and that the investigation is still ongoing. Well, that's right. He stressed that the information he has released so far is just preliminary. He says, among other things, his investigators still need to get a look at the body cameras from those officers to get a better understanding of exactly what happened here. Now, there were plenty of officers who got a look at the aftermath of that shooting. The entire area surrounding the Luxury Inn was flooded with patrol cars last night. That shooting happened a little after 8.30. Chief McManus says officers were here for the second time last night, responding to a call about a man with a gun who was arguing or fighting with someone in the parking lot. Now, on that final visit, he says officers finally found the person who called them, still outside in the parking lot. He told them that the man with the gun had gone back back into his motel room. McManus says when officers knocked on his door, the first thing they saw was a gun pointing out at them. He says they pulled their weapons and fired, hitting the man in the room. Now that commotion even caught the attention of people who were not on the motel property. 
being close that enough to a crime scene like that, it's uh, it scared us. It's uh, worrisome that you see people uh, that they are like criminals kind of stuff, and they are so close to you. It's uh, it, it it makes it scared me. The man in the motel room was the only person hit by gunfire. He was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital. Now again, Chief McManus says that the two officers who fired their weapons are going to be on administrative duty while the investigation is being conducted. And again, he stressed that the information so far is just preliminary. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Now to an Amber Alert for a missing teenager who police believe is in danger. The Salina Police Department searching for 17-year-old Alexis Vidler. She was last seen in Salina, that's north of Dallas. Police say the suspect is driving a black 2022 Mitsubishi Mirage. The Texas license plate number right there on your screen, RYT5102. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Salina Police Department, 972 382 2121. New details this morning in a story that has been trending on our website overnight. A woman accused of stealing thousands of dollars worth of lottery tickets is now in custody. So here's a look at the new mugshot just into our newsroom. This is 37 year old Myra Rios. Now our cameras were there yesterday as she was taken to the Bear County Jail. Police tell us that she stole $50,000 worth of lottery scratch off tickets from her workplace. The convenience store clerk is also accused of selling some of those stolen tickets. Right now, the San Antonio Police Department is reminding everyone all lottery tickets can be tracked. Some survivors of the Robb Elementary School shooting are experiencing survivor's guilt more than seven months after that tragedy. 10-year-old Daniel Reese thought of himself as a protector for his cousin, Ellie Garcia, who was killed in a classroom not far from his. He says he feels guilty he couldn't do anything to save her. Sadly, what Daniel is feeling is not uncommon. Counselors at the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center are seeing more people feeling that same way. Director Mary Beth Fiss says on top of counseling, people experiencing survivor's guilt should be able to help others. Yeah that goes a long way in making us feel um, that we're fulfilled after perhaps we felt we should have also experienced um, the depth of the tragedy. Daniel has been doing that for his fellow survivors, creating a network of support. He said he'd like to see more of it coming from outside as well. New this morning, a scary scene just north of downtown after two vehicles crashed in an intersection causing one of those vehicles to roll over. No one was hurt in that crash and police say the men inside the rolled vehicle would not admit to who was driving. Now to some good news on the health of Buffalo Bill safety DeMar Hamlin, who collapsed on the field during Monday night football after suffering cardiac arrest. The team says Hamlin is showing signs of improvement. He is still in critical condition at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center where he is in intensive care unit after learning he had to be resuscitated twice, once on the field after making a tackle and again at the hospital. You can stay with us on air and online as we continue to follow Hamlin's condition. Today the world celebrates the life of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. You're looking a live look at St. Peter's Square right now where tens of thousands of people we're gathering there to pay their respects early this morning. The 95-year-old former pontiff is being remembered as a modest leader and servant of the church. ABC's Mike Marza has more from Rome. This morning, remembering and celebrating the life of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Tens of thousands around the world gathered at St. Peter's Square for his funeral service. Many praying, others emotional. Dominus tecum. On a foggy, cool morning in Vatican City, ushers carrying out the coffin of St. Peter's Basilica, cardinals and other religious leaders in attendance, as well as delegations from Italy and Germany, even royalty. Benedict's death comes after 10 years of virtual seclusion, the first pope in some 600 years to resign from office. His successor, Pope Francis, presiding over the funeral mass in Vatican City, the first time in modern history a current pope will eulogize a retired pope.
He's going to re be remembered as one of the greatest intellects in the history of the church, which is saying something in 2000 years. Before he died, Benedict made clear he wanted a simple ceremony. This one, in contrast to when Pope John Paul II died, where more than a half a million people were at the funeral. But his nearly eight year reign overshadowed with a sex abuse scandal that's rocked the church. And in the biographical text buried with him, it reads, he firmly fought against crimes committed by representatives of the clergy against minors and vulnerable people. Benedict's body had been lying in state at the Basilica since Monday, where more than 200,000 people filed past to pay their respects. Benedict's coffin, containing several papal items symbolizing his role as bishop and pope, will be brought back into the Basilica for a private service before he is buried in the crypt under the church as he wished. Mike Marza, ABC News, the Vatican. It is now 641 and right around 47 degrees. And whether you have boys or girls, we know parenting can be a challenge, but who has it harder? When we come back, we're going to break it down. Welcome back into 645. Every parent knows raising kids can be tough, but which is easier to raise, boys or girls? Mm, as Nancy Alvarez reports, the answer isn't so simple. When it comes to parenting kids, what's harder, raising boys or raising girls? The answer might depend on who you ask. Raising a girl. <laughs> Maybe boys. Raising a girl. New research is showing parents of boys might have a harder job. Reports show boys are more likely to drop out of college and less apt to finish high school. And they're five times more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD. In a recent study of more than 13,000 parents, researchers found that those with at least one son experienced faster cognitive decline compared to those without sons, suggesting that parents of boys have brains that age quicker. However, a 2018 Gallup poll found that 54% of Americans said boys were easier to raise than girls, while only 27% said girls were easier and 14% said there was no difference. Some research suggests girls are better communicators in the younger years, but this may change later on. In one British study, two-thirds of parents said teenage girls were harder to raise than teenage boys. The bottom line? Parenting is tough work, no matter what the sex of the child. Oh. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. I think that's it. It's tough. It doesn't matter which it one. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and it just so. depends. You know, it's an individual case by case basis. Yeah. I had one of each. Yeah. So you have the real experience there. And <laughs> now it's fun to watch them raise theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Uh -huh. Enjoy yourself. Dad. Henry did. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> really? I told He's you. He's four. What did you expect yeah. him to do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guess what you used to do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like you. Aww. This is a fun part, though, being a grandparent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I hear. Get them hopped up on sugar and give them back, yeah. right? Yeah, hand them right Mike. back. Mike's off scare. Right. <laughs> He's yeah. off the screen right Yeah, there. it's like, you know, being an uncle. I'm not a parent, but it is easier when you can just give the kids back. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let's get a look here at Transguide. Uh, beautiful shot in some of these Transguide cameras, but 10 at Days of Alice, a little dark out there. Uh, but you can see the commute is picking up at 10 at Crossroads. And you can see a little bit of the sunrise peeking above the horizon there. So uh, nice to see that. And it's nice to see the roads have been quiet here in town. Can't say the same here, unfortunately, at 10 eastbound at FM 1516. So this is a crash we mentioned a little bit earlier, and it does look like TxDOT is reporting that is in the eastbound lanes at I-10. So you can see a little bit of the yellow building out there. Unfortunately, that's one of the areas where there are no transguide cameras that seem to show us the conditions out there. So right now, you're just going to have to give yourself plenty of time if you're traveling through the area. Back here in town, metropolitan area showing a little bit more of the buildup we mentioned on the far west side. You can see it there, US 90 as you approach 1604, and again, you usual spot in northwest side and I-35 on the northeast side. And that's usually expected around this hour. It's morning rush, so things are back to normal. We will see a little bit more congestion building up out there. But I would say just watch out if you're traveling through any of the areas where we are seeing any of the buildup. Give yourself plenty of time. We will watch the roads closely. But back here on Transguide, uh, great shot here at 10 at Brazos. I saw that at the corner of my eye from the uh, monitors that I have and just looks great out there. So a uh, great commute wow. and a great start to our penultimate 
penultimate day of the work week. Yeah, day, yeah, day of the work week, something like that. Or Thursday. Or Thursday. Or, or, or <laughs> Thursday yeah. Eve. Yeah. Back to kids when they start uh -huh. giving you maybe not with younger parents because you were raised on computers and stuff like that, but a little bit of you know kind of attitude as far as can you help me with this? Mm. Remember the line: I taught you how to use the toilet, so don't give me any of this. So, yeah. <laughs> So, we'll see if that works. <laughs> take a look outside. And, uh, yeah, the sun is coming up quite nicely. Hey, you want a good uh, alarm clock to wake you up? Imagine if this stuck in your face right there. Aww. Oh. <laughs> now, that was the sunset, but, yeah. Wow. It's a snout full of morning. So, anyway, I like the yeah. caption. <laughs> the caption was cute. What a moving yes, sunset. Yes, what a moving sunset. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great wow. picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. It is chilly out there. Grab a jacket close to freezing in comfort. 35 Ball Verde and 44 out there at the airport. 42 at Randolph and New Braunfels. Dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. Water vapor imagery. This darker shade of gray. And that means we're going to have just a lot of beautiful blue skies throughout the day like we've had the past couple of afternoons. And uh, We'll touch 42 degrees this morning and then really warm up. You can probably watch the thermometer go up throughout the morning hours. We'll make it in the mid 60s late morning, 70 at noon, 75 for a high temperature. 10 to 15 degrees above normal, normal high being 63 this time of year. And as far as the humidity, yeah, it's very, very low, and that's why we cool off in the mornings, why we warm up so quickly in the afternoons, because the dry air doesn't hold the heat in, then heats up very easily. Then the wind's going to be shifting around out of the southeast primarily later on this afternoon. It's going to start to pull in a bit more humidity. Not that it's going to be oppressively humid tomorrow morning, but as temperatures try and fall off again tonight with the clear skies and the humidity comes up, they can meet in the middle of a little bit, so we'll have a little bit of uh, patchy fog around the area tomorrow, and then the humidity is just going to continue to pump on in here then throughout the day tomorrow as well as into Saturday, and that's when we're going to be seeing a lot more in the way of low clouds, fog, mist, everything like that in a couple of showers. So here's what's going on. Now we had this the front move through here and it wasn't a blast of cold air because everything is moving just about straight west to east. Yeah, we do have a little bit of some ripples and these uh, little waves coming on through here, but we don't have anything coming straight down out of Canada. So we will get this little disturbance moving through here. That's going to bring another front through that'll cool us off slightly, get rid of some of the humidity by Sunday. And then in behind that, it's going to be the same situation even going into next week. Again, these little systems coming in here out of the Pacific, despite these little waves up and down, nothing, no blasts of cold air, nothing in the offing coming down here from Canada. So we're not going to see anything extreme as far as cold temperatures. 70 at noon today, sunny skies. High temperature today is going to make it up to 75. Beautiful, beautiful day once again. Open up the windows, enjoy it. Tomorrow we start off with a little bit of fog around here. Then a lot more sunshine and very warm. Then a lot more humidity, fog mist drizzle on Saturday, and then the front moves on through. We'll have a couple of showers and then lingering into Sunday as well. 65 for a high on Sunday. Thank you, Mike. It is 651, 47 degrees. And important news if you're trying to lay off the booze this new year. <laughs> Tomorrow on GMSA, how you can slow down your drinking and still enjoy some tasty beverages. And outside with live cam, a little chilly now, but later on today, you might want to get that lunch and take it out onto the patio or eat outside. Enjoy this, because this is absolutely gorgeous. Time check, 6.55, a uh, great shot here at 35 at 4.10. You can see the sun is rising and traffic is moving, but be on the lookout. While things don't look bad here, they actually uh, look like they've improved just a bit where we had a crash here off I-10 eastbound at FM 1516. Earlier, there was a little bit of a delay that was building up in the eastbound lanes. Looks like that has uh, quieted down just a little bit, but back here in town, slowdown seemed to be the trending issue, at least at this hour, northeast side, northwest side, and the far west side of San Antonio. Just remember to drive safe, but the great thing is here, we have a nice uh, sunrise, Mike. Yeah, uh, case in point, we're looking uh, kind of down to the south, and you can see that glow off in the eastern sky there. 44 in town, 34 Comfort, 35 Balverde. It is cold out there, but yeah, make sure the kids have name in a jacket. Yes. They're going to stuff in a backpack later on today. 75 or high temperature. Some fog tomorrow morning, and then warm again, and a couple of showers, foggier, and a front on Saturday. Pretty day. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.